for you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this beautiful new day. I thought we'd start out with a smudge and that was the Cherokee morning song that I was singing. If you know it, sing along. Whoops. <laughs> My hand just grabbed that. It's a top for this, this beautiful little gift I got from I mean, beautiful sunshine Seth one year for Christmas last year. Isn't that beautiful? Got a little acorn. Look at see the little things. Acorn, right? I'm talking about little seeds. An acorn becomes a mighty oak. Isn't that amazing? Those little seeds that we plant, how they grow. Got this out here for the Eagle Blessings. It says on here, Eagle Blessings, blessing us with the spirit of freedom and choice. Right. In my smudge I was using my owl feathers from the owl that I had found and I was gifted by creator on the side of the road the crack of dawn <laughs> beautiful morning right a new light a new day a new dawning may be grateful for every single day so it teaches us there's something to learn in every day and the day is not wasted. No time is wasted if you've learned something, right? Hey, maybe a new way to look at something. I don't know what that is. What is, what is that for you, right? It's a me, Wingish Nivay, Mishaki Kway, Sweet Grass Lotto, Medicine Woman, Your Friendly Friggins, Medicine Woman. So, Christiana Carr, Chris Carr, Superstar, all this beautiful divine being right here. And welcome all you beautiful divine beings right here, too. 
Yes. And a quiet weekend. It was nice. And then got on to drumming circle on the Zoom with some beautiful women up around the Pick River area up there. But it's nice how with that Zoom, they can be so far away, but yeah, they're like right there in my living room with me. It was so beautiful. I see some beautiful faces. I have a personal connection up there. My mother had gone to this uh, Badaban Healing Lodge many, many moons ago, as they say. Um, and she told me all about that. And I think it was the first I heard of that trauma recovery program. And I did actually do that same program, but I did it at Anantic. And I was going to go to Bedaubin, and I'd, I'd been on that track to go and be do some healing in their lodge there. Mm -hmm. I did get to go in and see the Bedaubin Healing Lodge. Oh, so beautiful. And and was such an amazing, a very healing, healing time for me, and I carry that with me always, and I'm so grateful for that. So getting on that, that Zoom circle last night was was beautiful, very much needed. Hearing my soul sister's voice, Julie Machado. Oh, I mean, I loved her voice from the moment I heard it. And we connected first online in emails, and... Uh, she hadn't even met me in person, and they opened up their home to me. And, oh, I was there. I had my first sweat lodge ceremony and felt honored and blessed because it was requested a special one, a healing sweat lodge for me. So it wasn't like the break, well, it's break, whatever. I don't know. I'm not trying to say it's all special, whatever. I felt very honored. I felt not special above anybody else, but like belonging, accepted, beautiful. The family opened up their home, but I felt welcomed in that community too. And it's just a beautiful community there. And I look forward to going back one day for sure. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Surprised I haven't been back already, but that's all right. Creator's timing and not mine. So that inspired me to open up with that Cherokee morning song and with that smudge. Because from my um, research in my family going back, um, on my mother's side, I have uncovered, not just me, I have it uncovered it. It was there, it's there. There's Cherokee, I even saw some Choctaw back there, but I like we're going... We we back and no, I did go and have my DNA tested, and it was one of the things the exes would. So that was something I'm like, I didn't care how small a part of it it was of me. It was the part I was the most proud of, always has been. I mean, wouldn't it be funny if you got your DNA back and there was nothing in there, and so it didn't come back and it said zero? And I went, what? Because I'm seeing it now, and then I look and I see find Micmac on my. Biological father's side, too. And not as far back, my great-grandmother, Christiana. Her father was in a census. And, uh, one, it's got the parents listed as Native and all the kids as Latinos. And then ten years later, they're all Irish. So, you know, when you're trying to go and trace your ancestry and stuff, it's all... It's all mixed up there. That's it's craziness. And when I got that DNA back, I thought how confusing because apparently a couple of my aunts got theirs back and it came back 25% Native American. So, either way, what I've learned is not about you know, even if you've got one drop, your little pink, pinky finger, whatever, it's about that soul, it's about you know, that ancestors. You know, and I thought back to one of the first things was about, you know, the, the assimilations and maybe breeding them out. And, oh, it's disgusting, right? Kill the Indian, save the child. That's all over the place. 
I was naive to think that we didn't have stuff like that up here in Canada that only happened down in the States. But no, we got the residential schools and they just closed like 99 or something like that. 95. This is in our generations. This was still happening in our generations. It's still happening now. Hmm. So, as I was saying with that DNA, I'm like, wow, maybe this is part of that, trying to breed it out. <laughs> I was like, they can take it from my blood, but they can't take it from my soul. <laughs> it's just the truth. This is what I identify with, and I've always identified with. This is a part of me. Whether Cherokee, Micmac, I saw Choctaw back in there. Nah. I just shared a picture of my Seth Green. We have a Seth Green. We're related to a Seth Green. And I think that's where I saw that, the Choctaw. Now, let me see. I just want to pull up that picture because I just sent it to my cousin there yesterday. I found this when I was doing the genealogy years ago. Either a great-grandpa or an uncle. So, that's turned down, down, down in the deep south because my family's from North Carolina. South Carolina, all around that area, Alabama. We got family in Austin, Texas there. But it is hard to, 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 um, you know, look at them, eh? Don't they look so friendly? Well, they were. But who's going to look so friendly? What are you being taken advantage of, right? Anyways. Then I got that the accent coming in there. Okay, here we go. Let's get a moving on. Uh, what I want to do today? I wanted to do. It was Monday. I thought it was. Was it Monday or was it Friday? Um, do that one card today. I like those morning star Mondays. But look, we're already twelve in here. So, one card reading. What are we going to do? Overalls. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. <sighs> calling in all of our energies, all of our directions. We're calling in all of our directions. We're going to start with the east and call all those energies <laughs> back to us. That's the path of illumination, place of clarity, place of man, place of fire, spirit. <sighs> Calling back all of our energies from the south. That's the waters, the emotions, the childhood, place of innocence. <sighs> Calling back all of our energies from the west. That's the place of introspection, the woman, the physical, the earth. <sighs> Calling back all of our energies from the north. That's the air, the wisdom years, the mental. <sighs> and we walk our red road. Our earth walk goes from south and childhood up to the north. That's our journey of love, loving ourselves and loving others, right? Journey of love. Learn to love ourselves and love others, right? Of course, maybe it's through loving others that we love ourselves. Or is it through loving ourselves we can truly love others? Mm, what's that for you? So we get up to the wisdom years, maybe we'll have that all sorted out, right? We know. Dream, envision, wonder. Now is that time. Right? As we get older, we get that calling and going, maybe there's something more for me than just what my family says there is. Maybe there's something more for me. Maybe, maybe creators called me to do more. Or whatever that is for you, right? So as we get up there in those wisdom years and we see that it's not just actually going out and exploring that. Sometimes we're going in, inside to dream and envision and wander around the inner planes Hmm, maybe it's that. I don't know what's that through you. East to west is the blue road of spirit that's always with us, right? That spirit has crafted. Hmm, you're pretty crafty, that spirit up there, right? And in the spirit crafting our lives here. But then maybe we changed that up. Maybe we've forgotten what we signed up for. Maybe we've forgotten what we went to learn from this, right? Hmm, I don't know. What is that for you? That inspiration? Does that come from that source too? Out of that e East Gate? Yeah, uh -huh. inspiration it does come out of that East Gate for that crafting. East to West, the Blue Road of Spirit. Swim in eternal light. Dolphin the swimmers. 
right? Because when we exit through that western gate, that's what will happen. We will then begin swimming. We go through those waters. Say we're born in through waters, we'll exit through those waters. And then we'll swim in that eternal light as we cross through that eastern gate. Oh, we haven't done it with these ones. Say, left, below, and within. Okay, there we go. Do you want one to pop out? Pop it, okay. Ooh, okay. Well, just one so it's clear. Just that one that jumps right out so we know that it's clear. What's that main focus for this week? Main focus. And keep in mind this week. Oh, there we go. Attainment 21. Oh, there's three there. Hmm. Okay, well, we've got one. Sampler of stones. We got one dancer in the world time there. Oh, that one was on the top. It came out like that, right? The attainment. Dancers. This is the world card in the traditional deck. Dancer in the wind of time. Then we have the exemplar of arrows. That's our thoughts. The air. Um, swords in the traditional deck. Master storyteller. See, swords, when you it's words, right? So rearrange it, it's words. Backwards, whatever. Our words can cut like knives. They can cut very deeply. And what are the stories that we're telling ourselves? The stories can keep us, you know, circling in the wars. Or stories can help us bring us peace. Stories can teach us that we've learned enough from that. It's not to repeat. Right? We can change our stories if we're not liking how it's going. Right? Reflecting on potential use of resources. That's the two of stones. That's material. That's the pentacles in the traditional deck. So it's looking at that. And I think in the traditional deck, it's with them juggling. So it's like juggling those choices, material and earth, but it's all, right? Reflecting on the potential use of resources. We're on faith, right? Money can be a resource as well, but is that what we're all relying on? How do we attain that? How do we get that? Dancers in the wind of time, attainment. Then we attain that peace. I'll leave those up here. And I'm going to read this one. The dancer in the winds of time. Oh, yeah, this one is. Um, uh, okay, yeah, 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 we're good here. Okay, we're good here. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a nice, big, long one, but it's just a couple pages, too. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, right? I want to bring that closer. For you to look at it if i brought it up there see i have to move these i think then there we go ah interesting right like you can hear my thoughts <laughs> i'm tuning in to me dancer oh come on why, oh, why, oh, why do I got to be so fussy? It's for you. Absolutely, it is for you. There we go. There. Right, why not? We're just going to move this all over there then. Well, you can see those. Well, you can see, you can see. Open your eyes and you can see. <laughs> okay. Right? You know I'm a weirdo, right? I never claim to be anything else. Right? Mm-mm-mm-mm. I mean, these are there, but... This helps us. With it. The attainment. Okay, I don't know, I'm already 20 minutes, I haven't even started her yet. What's it saying to you already, just looking at it like that? Okay, okay. Okay, number and meaning, 21 is attainment. Mm -hmm. Traditional name is the world. The medicine woman energy, dancer in the winds of time. Affirmation. 
The present is my point of power. All light, all love, all energy pass through me now, creating ongoing beauty, balance, and awakening on the path toward infinite bliss. From death, the pause of perfect peace, I am born to dance on top of the world. The card speaks. I am cosmic consciousness, an awareness in the now of the many forces at work on every plane of existence in and beyond this world. In a sense, I am what has been referred to as the new age. When all is in balance and everyone lives in peace and harmony, recognizing their oneness with each other. I am the end of an old cycle and the beginning of a new one. I am a sign that all have learned to work with nature, using the laws of nature to benefit, to the benefit of all. The streams and rivers flow, turning the water wheels. The wind gives its power to the windmills. The sun warms homes and gives light. Each element and being is recognized for its worth and utilized in beneficial ways according to the Creator's plan. You are now a co-creator taking part in the planetary transformation now taking place. Self and world are one being, breathing in one life. Breathing one life. Self and world are one being, breathing one life. You are the dancer holding wands of male and female life force in perfect balance. The polarities within the self have been recognized and brought into a conscious, creative work relationship, working relationship. There is a synthesis, crystallization, perfection, stability, all within the greater flow. You move consciously with the cosmos understanding your place in time. I dance freely and with power, for I have faced the death of all that flows through me. In other words, I have transcended possession and desire for results. My actions are based on the fullness of the moment rather than on sacrifice for the future. I understand that now is all futures. I understand that now is all futures. I therefore live in death. Hmm. It is death as a state of constant peace and surrender to what is. Thus, death is the ultimate balance during life. Hmm. I have united polarities of existence. As you approach the understanding of this within yourself, the world is yours. In earth, I am through you. Self-questioning. Moment to moment, I need only ask, am I in harmony with the good of all portions of myself? And to breathe in peace and exhale love. Ask yourself this question ten different times today. Am I in harmony with the good of all portions of myself. Ten times today, ask yourself, am I in harmony with the good of all portions of myself? Mm. An exercise. Go to a high place and dance with these thoughts in mind. Mm. Meditation. Take your state of peaceful mind into your everyday life and rejoice. Visualization. Lift off from the world in your mind's eye and look down. See this small glowing blue planet. See where the trouble spots are and breathe them light. The astrological sign of this card is Saturn. The food and colors is the world is yours from which to choose. Oh, here's a Navajo blessing from the Navajo blessing way. Okay. I will be happy forever. Nothing will hinder me. I walk with beauty before me. I walk with beauty behind me. I walk with beauty above me. 
I walk with beauty below me. I walk with beauty around me. My words will be beautiful. Mm. Being a channel of the divine. The four powers of creation are now freely flowing through you. You fully realize the purpose of each, and now it is for you but to allow them to fulfill that purpose through your own personal life. You know that each action you take, no matter how small, affects the entire world. At the same time, you know that the only choice you ever need to make is to go with that inner flow of harmony. You have now learned to sense. You have the power of all directions at your command. You have taken ideas from inspiration east, through planning in the south, through the maturity in the west, and through the destruction of your creation into death up into the north, letting them go and opening to the resurrection of energy as a fresh new idea emerges again from the east. A dancer must let go of one step in order to move on to the next. A musician must release one note to find the next. Rhythm and harmony require constant shifts and balances. This is the ability to receive, integrate, and let go. Uh, this, this ability, not this is, this ability to receive, integrate, <laughs> integrate. Okay, we're almost done. Let me, let me, okay, hold on. Blah, 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 blah. This ability to receive, integrate, and let go is what the tarot has been teaching you throughout the Major Arcana. The great mystery. Now you have but, now you have but to dance your dance of life. You may stumble, fall, and pick yourself up to start again, but you cannot truly err if you trust in your basic being. You are universally co connected. There is no way you can be lost forever. No matter how far you might veer from your perfect path, the events of life will bring you back over and over again until you reach that center point of power within yourself. Until you reach ultimate confidence in your own thought, word, and deed. Until you reach ultimate confidence in your own thought, word, and deed. The strands of life continually pull you from all directions until you take full command of the reins of power within your being. Then you are not like a puppet on a string, but rather a dancer pulling the strings gracefully as she sways with the winds of time. Mm, 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 mm. So beautiful. Loving this book. So look at that. And here we have that balance. So it kind of works our overall there. Ha ha, right? We got to think before we act. And there we go. So we have a male and female sides there. It seems to as well, right? Exemplar of the arrow, right? Okay, fine. I'll read those from here too. We don't have the bowls. We had these stones. So I do have these all marked here. And the arrows. Exemplar of the arrows. Arrows in the older tarot deck is the suit commonly referred to as swords. Within the word swords is the word words. <laughs> this is an easy way to remember just what it is that causes or relieves struggle. In some tarot books you will find the suit of swords referring oftentimes to struggle or conflict. Now we are learning that our words, thoughts, and attitudes create our reality of conflict or peace. Before you learn to take command of your words and the combinations of words that are your beliefs and attitudes, the sword is an appropriate symbol for them. Your words, uh, like swords, get you into and out of trouble. But as you learn to take charge of your mind power, your words become arrows directed at a specific target and released with that particular energy, with a particular energy. The point of your words must be to direct must be to direct thought energy to its most inspiring and uplifting level. The words of a great poet or storyteller are good examples. They encourage right action from all who hear them. 
The lessons of the arrow suit will bring you towards mastery of your mind, helping you to get what you need in life and to give what life needs from you. Your struggles will tell you when your thoughts are off the mark. Each arrow card will help you re-aim, to realign your mind with the one mind, the cosmic bullseye. When your mind is aimed at the highest target, you will be magnetically drawn toward that which will cause you to take action in behalf of reaching that target. The mind is not simply a magic tool that, once thinking positively, will cause life to bring treats to your doorsteps without you taking action. No, it is instead a powerful magnet that will draw opportunity to you in the area of your aims and goals. It will draw opportunity to you in the area of your aims and goals. It doesn't magically show up at your door. You, well... <laughs> You must pursue them with continued proper attitude. Again, the words that you continue to dwell on while carrying out actions dis, 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 de, designate the kind of experience you will have during that action. In other words, it is not enough to plan and make affirmations of what you want. You must take opportunities when they come and be mindful of right attitude appreciation, and full participation while you act. When you are finished with the experience, you must hold words of self-acceptance about what you have done and begin again to plan and affirm the next step. The suit of arrows calls you to undertake a great mental discipline, but the rewards of, of a life of integrity and clear direction are well worth the effort. As time goes by in your journey through the arrows, you will see that the point of it all, the result of your right mindfulness, right action, is to become a sage who passes wisdom on to future generations through words and example. Your words must guide and teach all who do not yet know these things you have spent your life discovering. And then we go to the where 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 that's the ice of arrows. Where we we need the exemplar of the arrows. Is that what we're at? Exemplar of arrows. That's the apprentice. No, oh, so the exemplar comes after. The, there we go. Exemplar of arrows. The master storyteller. Once upon a time, I lived a warrior's life. I strived. I sought. I conquered my fears. I saved the lives of others who were fearful by helping them to be brave. And all the way, I enjoyed myself. So I'm here to talk about it. Hear my stories, and you will learn my warrior's ways. Listen to my life, and you will find the way that is your own to travel. For I am kind and can see all ways. I have risen high up to the sky and soar with eagles to watch you. I have dug into the soil of my own soul and grown. I have traveled by instinct to journey's end and floated in peace in the night. My eyes are above the world, but my stories are in it. Thus, I can teach, and my words will be beautiful. The Lesson The exemplar has lived and thus passes on wisdom, not empty words. Back up your beliefs with experience. This is the only way to test for truth. The exemplar is the master storyteller, a sage and wise one whose words empower. It is time to encourage the young, clarify possibilities for a balanced future, and disseminate pure thought. You have cast out doubt and despair. Now you can reveal hopes that can be made real by those who follow you. Speak of the world worth working for. Your words pave the way to the future. Your experience tells you which words hold fast through time. Your thoughts are pure, for they are based on a reality you understand fully by the life you have lived. They are not in conflict with what is, but encompass and describe it. Mm-hmm. I mean, hallelujah. Did we have stones before? The suit of stones in other decks has been called pentacles or coins. In the original Medicine Woman Inner Guidebook, it was called beads. 
but it has been renamed stones in order to bring your awareness back to the source of all goods and means of exchange, earth herself. The substance earth is the raw material for everything made on this planet, including its life forms, the plants, animals, and human beings. In the 20th century, technological societies, in the 20th century technological societies, there is little awareness of the consciousness that dwells within anything made of earth other than the human form. However, the native peoples of the world have always seen consciousness indwelling in all things. It may be easy for you to recognize consciousness in animals, even plants, but what about dirt itself, stones, and human created goods? To get a sense of how consciousness might be in everything, try to think of it in this way. Imagine the original native people living their harmonious lives close to nature. They lived, acquired wisdom through experiences, and died. Generation after generation was buried in the earth where bodies were transformed into elemental earth forms once again, dust to dust. Bones and flesh changed into smaller and smaller living organisms. Microbiological and chemical life elements. The nutrients that create future bodies through the plants, soil, and stones. Hmm. Through the soul of the human being. Though the soul of the human being has left its material form and expanded into higher levels of life, it has left something of its wisdom in each element from which it had previously taken human form. Literally, the stones are our ancestors. The spirits of our ancestors may live elsewhere in higher vibratory bodies, possibly finished with earth incarnations, but they have left us their life wisdoms in the substance of earth itself. How do we discover these wisdoms hidden within things? Natural objects such as plants and stones can be related to in a way similar to how you would relate to human beings. After all, they once were some body. <laughs> now their elements have entered a new kingdom. Their aliveness and growth have begun following different laws. Their guides are not nature spirits and divas, beings mostly unseen by human eyes. Fairies, elves, gnomes, and all of the little people who inhabit Earth Mother's mystery are their friends. If you are among the fortunate few, you may be able to cross from your human spiritual world into theirs through, opening, through the opening you create by your belief in their existence. But whether or not you see fairies, elves, and such, you can still honor the life you do see, the plants, trees, and stones of Earth's body. Think of crystals and gems as the crystallization of the purest consciousnesses bequeathed to us by our ancestors. You might think of crystal as Christ all, a stone created by a Christed consciousness, a clear consciousness of total love. Holding this view, these stones are very sacred. But who can tap this consciousness from the stone? Only those seeking that Christ light within themselves. Each gem and stone is an individual entity with a lesson of its own to teach. And each one is a jewel is also a jewel in the conscious living body of Mother Earth herself. Mother Earth is a very luminous being, though she may appear quite simple on the surface. Her treasures, like your own, are within. They take some digging and polishing to uncover. Hmm. She also has gifts of gold and silver to give, precious metal ores, oils, precious metals, ores, oils, and woods. Most often we receive these gifts in our modern lives after they have been manufactured into products by others. It is easy for us to forget Earth's part in their creation and it is particularly easy to forget the aliveness of these things. Native people once understood that for every process they put a natural object through, they must make up for its loss of aliveness or consciousness by replacing it with their own. Put simply, when they polished and shaped a stone, changing its former integrity, they added their loving desire to create according to an inspired vision. In other words, they put their spirit into each object. Today we think of artists and craftspeople doing this, but in native lives, every process was art. 
A builder talked to the trees and stones, requesting them to give up their forms to become a dwelling. With their agreement, she would proceed, adding her love every step of the way. The finished product was then a living thing, a dwelling filled with life energy. You can intuitively sense this energy in any handcrafted item. What about present-day mass-produced items? These are, for the most part, dead. They have often been taken, no doubt, without asking permission from the earth, as raw materials in a disgraceful and ungrateful way. Nothing has been given back to earth in return for her treasures, her body laid bare, unloved, unrespected. The materials are handled by a series of unhappy, underpaid, uninspired workers, ignorant of their role in this crime. More humans who are also suffering from this disrespect and feel the lack it causes within their lives. They try to make up for it by charging a lot of money to replace the work that has been stolen. You simply needing a tool or wanting a tiny pleasure purchase the goods. Then you become part of this chain. You have traded your work earned money for a pretty and useful but dead thing. From you, it will ask for life. If you value it, love it, care for it, use it fully for its purpose, and thank the elements from which it was made, you will have given back consciousness, the, the consciousness it was lacking. Ideally, you will then pass it on, an antique shining with a pantina of having aged with care. <laughs> Or you will bury it once again to become the body of Mother Earth, restoring it to its original source. You may have and enjoy all of the gold and riches of the Earth. You may acquire as many possessions as you wish. Your power and theirs comes only from loving them and using them with your own high consciousness. Any object can empower you if you treat it as an entity with whom you have a relationship. Any object can steal your life energy if you are unaware of its life pr process. If it was not taken from earth and created respectfully, you must understand that it will haunt you with its desperate need. Foods are gifts from Mother Earth too. It is perhaps easiest here to see that you, that you end up healthier if you garden, cook, and eat simply with love. If you eat highly processed, chemicalized foods from abused soils, your body must simply give up its life force to them. Youth has an abundance of life force, and the results of a sugar, soft drink, abused animal, pesticide, vegetable diet can go unnoticed, unnoticed for years. But balance will come, either through human awareness and change, or disintegration of the body, causing death and transformation back into those simple living organisms that create nutrients for earth, dust to dust. You must see the circle of life. There is absolutely no taking without giving. I have elaborated on the suit of stones because we live in a very material consuming society and do not see our part in the process, every one of us, our part in the process. The current technolo technological culture doesn't want to recognize death, decay, disintegration, and transformation. Mm -mm. Every precaution is taken against seeing or talking about the end because the end is not seen to be also the beginning. But it is. All forms change into new forms. Age becoming youth. Death becoming life. Disease becoming health. Goods becoming earth, earth becoming us. There can be no true hoarding of anything. You can only have as long as you care for. Loving care of anything, your body, your relationships, your house, your car, your toothbrush, your talent, is all that keeps it going. Leave anything alone without your consciousness maintaining it and it will soon be gone, changed into something else. To have, you must hold. Hold gently and kindly in your mind the image of loving respect for all beings and all things. 
then they will live for you and give life to you as well. Mmm. Right? And then the two of stones re reflecting on the potential use of resources. Prayer. The fertile ground of nature surrounds me now, waiting with her gifts for me to notice. The great spirit within stands ready in my soul to activate whatever abilities I choose. Which will it be? What can I offer to the world that will bring my earthly reward and soothe my soul? Bring my earthly reward and soothe my soul. I reflect now on myself and where I am. What can I do for this land around me? What can I do for my people? Mm. It's not what can I get from the land. What can I get from my people? What can I do for this land around me? What can I do for my people? As I activate myself in a chosen direction, the road to prosperity is cleared. The lesson of the card. You're in a relationship to material things. Yep. Think of this as you would a relationship to a friend. Is it a good one? Are you offering your true self or just giving at the surface level? What does the world want from you in relation to what you have to offer? Hmm. What attracts you to the world? Which of Earth's things excites you? Do you like to play with her? Sing to her? Achieve results with her? Make things together? Are you at home in nature? Do you like adding your life to the cities? Now is your time to form a mutual, beneficial relationship with the things around you. Think of, of the world as your lover. What do you want from her? Him. It says H-I-R. Hair. What are you willing to give? Hmm. If you are feeling out of balance, uh, as if you are giving more than you are receiving, you are probably giving surface abilities rather than your true talents. If you're feeling like you're giving more than you're receiving, you're probably giving surface abilities rather than true talents. Hmm. You may be in the wrong occupation. Or you may just be timid in expressing and following your real interests. This will have to change. Hmm. If you are feeling like you receive too much money, time, or things, there is probably a block in your distribution system. Do you exercise under Ace of Stones? Plant your money? Oh, do the exercise under Ace of Stones. All right. And one, look at your positions. Two, get rid of everything you're not thankful for. Three, observe your feelings. Four, visualize the thing you desire. Then five, relax. It goes into more detail there. but So do that exercise. Do this exercise, okay? Okay. There's the exercise there. Okay. All right. Okay. Ah, uh, woo! Right, and there, almost done. Plant your money, time, or goods in the care of some person or organization that would, that really would use them to enhance life on Earth. Do it now. Use. Um, blah, blah, blah. Your success is the crystal clear thought of your desire placed into Earth's raw material. Together, you will form the things you both need for a long and happy life. Wow, powerful. So how are you attaining those things in your life, right? They will come to you if you're opened up, if you believe. Right? Just believe. You just gotta believe in yourself. Believe in the world. <laughs> have a wonderful blessed day and week thank you so much let me know how you like this um i think this one goes on a little bit longer but anyways love you biggest heart hugs ever thank you for being you and shining your light through and everything you do because you know what this world oh it so needs you i mean i'm really glad you're here so let's 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 attain let's let's see those stories that we're telling ourselves let's reflect on those Potential use of resources, or maybe how we use the resources in the past. Let's look at that. We're going to be changing that up and showing that appreciation and being thankful, right?
doing those dances. Are you going to be puppets on the strings? Or are you going to be flowing with those strings? Mm. Creating beautiful things. Mm -hmm. Love you. Wonderful, blessed day.